With us now to talk about the disruption at the Ambassador Bridge and what it means for the economy is Mr. Rakesh Naidu, President and CEO of the Windsor-Essex Regional Chamber of Commerce. Sir, welcome to Forum Daily. Thank you, Nima. Thanks for having me here. So what are the most uh, recent updates on the situation at the Windsor-Detroit border right now? Yeah, well, we're still experiencing disruption. Um, sometime back, one lane was open for traffic going towards uh, U.S., uh, but uh, more recently, CBS has announced that they are temporarily closing down the bridge, uh, which means there is no traffic flowing this way, uh, though the tunnel is open and I believe uh, traffic is being diverted uh, to the Sarnia border as of now. Hmm. And uh, what sort of impact will this have on your members in particular, sir? Well, tremendous. Uh, you know, I mean, this is a very important border crossing uh, for Windsor-Essex region, but I would say for uh, Ontario and for Canada, um, you know, every day there is... Uh, almost uh, 300 million plus worth of goods that crosses that particular bridge. Uh, and uh, the, you know, the goods that are brought in are goods which are required for many different sectors. There is you know, manufacturing parts, components that go into several automotive plants that uh, several tens of thousands are employed in. There is perishable goods that cross the border. Uh, there is goods that a lot of small businesses rely on. So it's it's a very important border crossing, and any disruption in the border crossing can have uh, a significant impact, uh, especially for a lot of businesses that have just-in-time manufacturing, which you know requires them, or which you know basically what they do is they they run with very low inventory. Uh, and when you have such a low inventory, you know, any disruption can, uh, can be very significant. And as you're saying, this is one of the most busiest border crossings in North America. So what kind of disruption would this have on citizens and consumers in Windsor and even across Canada if this continues? Well, it'll come, it'll come back and bite all of us. You know, I mean, uh, as I mentioned that uh, goods, you know, many different kinds of goods cross the border, uh, whether it is automotive components, whether it's perishable goods, food items, groceries, you name it. There's so much that crosses the border on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, that if there's a disruption, uh, at some point of time, it's going to you know, hit us. You know, there will be empty shelves, uh, potentially, at the grocery stores. Uh, there'll be cost increases. You know, we're, we're experiencing a 30-year a high inflation as it is. Uh, part of it is because of supply chain disruption. And what this is doing is, is really increasing the supply chain disruption, and that will add to the cost. So eventually, all of us will be paying for it, uh, whether, uh, no matter which side we are on, all of us will be impacted by it. Wow, sounds like quite a significant impact, sir. So uh, what kind of steps are you calling for from the federal and provincial governments to tackle this? Well, you know, first of all, I think a border crossing is so important, so vital for the economy of both countries. I think it needs to be free uh, for a free and fair trade to happen. You know, the barrier should be completely removed. Uh, the trade should flow completely unhindered. So we are calling for uh, a very uh, timely, immediate uh, action so that, you know, the border can uh, can be opened up and, and the goods can flow flow freely. Uh, we also urging, ev you know, everyone, both sides uh, to sit down, uh, have a conversation and find a resolution. Uh, and we would like that to happen at the earliest. You know, I mean, this blockage is hurting us. You know, uh, it's a crisis situation. Even if, you know, an hour or two hour goes by when the border is closed, it starts impacting businesses, especially in the Windsor-Essex region and those regions that have similar supply chain and makeup of industry. Uh, and this has been going on for much longer. Uh, so we're really expecting both sides to come up uh, with, sit down and, and come up with a resolution at the earliest. And uh, have you heard back from any of these authorities from uh, both the U.S. or Canada uh, in terms of your calls to action? Well, what I can share is that there's growing concern on both sides. You know, uh, we are in constant touch with several businesses uh, on both the Canadian side and the U.S. side. Um, you know, as of uh, just about 15 or 20 minutes back, uh, there is at least uh, 70 plus organizations within Canada and U.S. that have voiced uh, or they've expressed uh, their dissatisfaction at, uh, at the situation and that are urging immediate steps. These are large organizations and associations that, uh, that represent several thousands of businesses in Canada and U.S. My counterpart in Detroit Chamber of Commerce, you know, the Canadian, the Canadian U.S. Business Association, uh, they all have uh, voiced, uh, they've expressed their, their 
anguish at the situation and they want it to be resolved at the soonest. So uh, both sides, you know, whether it's business associations or private sector, uh, everyone wants this to be resolved at the earliest. All right. We'll definitely have to keep an eye on this developing situation. Uh, Mr. Naidu, thank you again for joining us today. Thanks for having me.